Oh, hey, what's going on? It's Michelle Cunningham. Okay, this is very exciting, but I have a funny story. I couldn't find my clip to hold my microphone on, so I used a clothespin, which is kind of cool. All right, so in today's video, I am talking about how to increase your sales from your Facebook Live parties. I'm pretty good at the Facebook Lives. Like the first one I ever hosted, my team and I, we sold $20,000 in 45 minutes and we recruited over 20 people. And then I was like, dude, I think I'm onto something here. And so I wanted to give you my 10 tips today on how to dramatically increase your sales. Like I have a course, it's one of my top selling courses. It's called Mastering the Live. And I teach people how to master live presentations. And what is so interesting is in the group with over a thousand students, I continually hear a lot of the same questions and it's usually related to how do I increase my sales? I did this, I did that. And there's a few things that people do incorrectly that make all the difference in the world. So that's what we're talking about in this video. My top 10 tips. Let's jump in. Okay. So number 10 on my list is make sure that you've got a set schedule for the year for your own sanity, for your family's sanity, for your team's sanity, and so that you can communicate with your clients. Something really smart you could do is create a Google Calendar with all the different events, with all the different themes for the year so your clients know when they are and where they will be hosted. What Facebook group will they be hosted in? That's gonna be another one of my tips I'll share in a second about the Facebook groups. So Google Calendar, super smart. Number nine on my list, aim to have about 30 personal guests on every single event. That doesn't include who your team invites, that includes you only. Like who have you personally invited and confirmed to come to the event? It makes such a difference when you have a ton of people watching. And so if you have about 30 people, eh, not everyone shows up, but 30 is a pretty good number to shoot for for each of your live events that you're gonna host. My live events were about 45 minutes, and I tried to have 30 personal guests on each one. And also my team brought some people too. Okay, so number eight on my list is make sure that you've created a price sheet that you've mailed in advance to the people that are gonna be watching. Why? Because number one, it's a reminder of, oh, I need to buy stuff. Number two, it gets them excited about the upcoming events. Like, whoa, look at all the cool stuff I can buy. And number three, after the event, it's something that they can physically work with. And it's another, thing that gets them reminded and thinking like, oh yeah, I want to buy this stuff as they're circling and starring, which I'll share in a second, how you can use that price sheet during your live. Number seven, it's a big one. And I hear it a lot in my group, like no one's showing up to the event. I'm like, okay, have we reminded them like five, six times each? Typically the answer is no. And so I know that might sound excessive, but people are crazy busy. And the bigger deal you make about your upcoming event, and the more you remind people, the more they'll understand how imperative it is that they will be there. And the more fun you make it sound, and the more relaxing you make it sound, and different and unique you make it sound from other events that are out there, more people are gonna show up to your event. So make sure that you're constantly reminding, and it doesn't have to be an annoying reminder. It can be something like, hey, Sarah, the event on Saturday, just a quick heads up, we just added in seven more giveaways that we're gonna be doing during the event. So I'm just excited that you're gonna be there. It's gonna start right at seven and we'll be done at 7.45. Just wanted to send you the link again. Cannot wait, love you my friend, boom. In other words, we're saying, dude, you're not gonna to forget to come, but we're not gonna say that because that's not nice. Don't say it that way. Make it really awesome and super exciting so people are like, I gotta be at this thing. It's gonna be so awesome. Number six, pretty simple. Make sure they're actually in the Facebook group. So you're gonna host your event in a private Facebook group that you've personally invited them to, okay? So you personally invite them into the group. Now they are in it. Make sure that they are in the group. Sometimes they didn't accept the invite. They didn't get in the group. They didn't click the link. They are lost. They are confused. Most people that are gonna be on your event do not understand Facebook like we do. And so you need to sometimes tell them where to go and give them a little bit of direction. Number five, I get this question a lot too. Make sure that you host it in the same Facebook group every time. Yeah, the same one. Why? Because the people that were in for the last event are gonna see this event, right? And they're like, whoa, I didn't know you were hosting an event because they maybe you didn't invite them to this one or maybe they missed the invite. But I can't tell you how many times I sold to people that I didn't invite to the event and I recruited people that I didn't invite to the event because they just happened to see it in their Facebook feed and they happened to dial in and watch. 
and they happen to remember they wanted to order products from me or they happen to remember they were meaning to join my team. Isn't that crazy? Like literally this happened frequently. And so always have it in the same group and you wanna grow that group really big because the more people are in it, the more interaction, the more you can post about your products when you're not doing a live, tag people in different posts and people will constantly see what's going on in that group and it just becomes a, the ultimate selling machine for you. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so number four is when I did this, I did it in the group, but I also hosted an event for it. Why? Because events make a little bit more noise. And so when you create an event, the Facebook will automatically invite people and remind them about the upcoming event. And so it's helpful if you put the event in there, people say they're gonna come, you can even tag people in the event. And so they're gonna get reminded by Facebook about this upcoming event, which is pretty awesome. And so having an event is super awesome, which leads me to number three, which is you wanna make sure that you host your live on the group and share it into the event. Don't just go live in the event because people who didn't register for the event won't see it. And if everybody's sitting on the group, we wanna be the loudest on the group. So go live and then have someone on your team or you can personally share it into the event so it taps both places which is really awesome, that's really smart. Okay, number two, you wanna make sure that they have their price sheet that you've mailed to them. Worst case scenario, you didn't mail it, you email it to them, now they have to print it, but typically people can't find printer ink, they can't find their printer, and now they're irritated. So if you just mailed it to them, it's a whole lot easier. But what you want them to do is while you're showing them the products, you're going to, at the end, you're gonna have them pull out that sheet and have them put a star next to anything that's on their wish list and a circle on anything they'd like to take home. Which leads me to number one. Now you're gonna follow up with them and you're gonna let them know you're gonna follow up with them. But we're not gonna just send them a Facebook messenger. Why? Because these people don't hang out on Facebook like you and I do. They're not on Facebook. They don't even know that Facebook Messenger is a separate app they have to download because they don't even use it. They don't even know. And so if we're trying to message them on Facebook, we're missing the boat. People check text messages. Text messages like 99.9% .9 of the time. So we're gonna text them. And we're gonna follow up for about a week after the event. Because right after the event, they have to go put their kids down, their husband's irritated, they gotta do this, they gotta do that. They forget to order. So we're gonna follow up in the week after the event. We'll follow up that night, we'll follow up the next day. Just like, hey girl, how'd you enjoy the event? I hope you had a ton of fun. Hey, send me a picture of your sheet when you get a second. Love to work through like what you need and uh, get you all squared away, right? She might ignore you three days later. Hey girl, just wanted to check back in. I'm so glad you were on the event. Was there anything that was on your wish list that you're thinking about getting? She ignores you. Fifth day, which is now maybe Friday, she's getting paid. <laughs> hey girl, I just wanna check in one last time. I don't wanna bug you. Was there anything that you wanted to take home? Uh, I just wanted to check in because I am shipping out orders and uh, finishing up this party from this week. So just let me know, my friend, love you, okay? We're not gonna be super annoying about it, but we're gonna remind them. Why? Because people are crazy busy and they, they don't always remember they wanted to order or and you're probably like me, you get stuff in your cart and then you're like, well, I gotta go to bed, I'm so tired. And you can't remember and you're like, I know I wanted to order something, but then you're like, I don't know. Like getting someone to complete their order will take your persistence and you, your help because sometimes people are really busy. So, uh, so text message could even be a quick phone call. Just, hey girl, do you have five minutes? I'll just call you, I'll hammer it out real quick. People appreciate that. They need your help. Be assertive, not aggressive, assertive, and they will appreciate you for it. So if you're like, oh my gosh, this is really good training. I actually do have a 45 minute training for you. It's called my Mastering the Live Training. And, and it shows you basically everything I do to host profitable Facebook Live parties. I put the link below. So if you're like, wait, <laughs> I need that training. Yeah, you should check it out. It's free. It's a 45 minute webinar that I created. And it shows you in depth, even like more of these things I just shared and uh, it's pretty, pretty solid. So if you're like, I need that, uh, check it out. And then you'll see at the end of that, there is even a little bit more information about my top selling mastering the live course, which uh, is a game changer. So I love you. I hope you found this helpful. And again, subscribe, hit the like button and share this. If you know somebody that you think would find value in this information. I love you, my friend. Bye for now.